So hey guys, welcome back to New Digs. And we are once again here in my garden and it is, um, we just passed the summer solstice. So we are officially in summertime now. Um, do it. It's a beautiful June, June day. And we wanted to talk about, uh, it's kind of a gardening 101 question that both of us get at the nursery. Yeah, people are very confused about mulch versus compost. Yeah. And what does that really mean? And we wanted to kind of dig into that a little bit and, and sort of explain the difference. It's, now, a, it's a matter of function. That's perfect. So it's a matter of function. So what it what it does, what it's used for, what you're expecting it to do in the garden. Exactly. Perfect. So, okay. so mulch, its function is to keep down weeds, maintain moisture in your soil, and sometimes decorative. Right. It gives the garden a finished, a finished look because it, it kind of will cover in between plants and it'll give it the bed, you know, that consistency. Um, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, so it can it'll be decorative and, and um, pretty. Now compost could, compost's whole function is, is about improving the texture yes. of the soil, adding organic matter to the soil, improving the soil in general. Yeah. So, so compost, what, when you see compost, it should look like, they call it black gold. It, it should have that really rich organic. And remember that what compost is, is broken down organic matter. It's stuff that you've intentionally broken down so that it just is creating um, all kinds of micronutrients and things like that that improve your, your existing soil. Right, and it's, it's improving the texture of yeah. your soil. It's going to be part of that whole sort of food web of, yeah. of mycorrhizae and bugs and worms. Keeping your, making your soil more alive. Exactly. Yeah. So, that being said, the two worlds can overlap. Mulch right. and compost can, can overlap. Compost and mulch can have overlapping functions. For example, you can use compost as a top dressing on a garden bed and it functions like a mulch. And top dressing just means you're putting it in a, a layer on top of your garden bed and it will serve all the functions that mulch does. In addition, mulch after all is organic material and so it will break down in the soil and improve it over time. It just takes a little bit longer to, to have that improving function. Say so it's last year, I just got compost and I, I created all these new beds. They were just compost and it, I didn't bother with mulch on top because I just let the compost, again, it had that decorative effect. Um, and it was because I had such a nice layer of it, it was keeping weeds down and maintaining moisture. So I didn't need mulch. This year I will, okay. because now, you know, I built my beds up. I got these gorgeous beds with the compost last year. Now I won't need, to, you know, if I wanted to add a top dressing of compost on my old beds, it's probably what I would do. And then I would put mulch over top of it. But the compost, um, again, it, it, it's, it's just creating that beautiful soil and mulch is more like a surface, a surface treatment, I would say. Right, so mulch, you want to put it on, a, you know, fairly thick. So and when we say how thick? Well, I'd say, I'd say two inches is, is good. But I know some people would do it even thicker. Yeah. But, you know, I'd say an inch and a half is sort of the minimum. Yeah. Why don't bother? I, if you don't have enough of, of, of your, um, mulch it's probably better to mulch half your bed well mm -hmm. and do the next the other half the next year then then do the whole thing too thinly because then it's it's yeah you know you're still going to get the weeds and everything yeah and and talking about sort of how how you purchase this stuff so the way most home gardeners purchase both compost and mulch is in bagged bagged form so you'd go in and you'd buy individual bags. Right. Um, we recommend Coast of Maine because we love it. And they have right. a whole range of, of different planting mixes and composts, but they also do have a mulch. Um, but you may go, if you go to you know, your hardware store or something like that, you might see pine bark mulch, you might see cedar mulch, um, and those have different textures. So you might see some that have kind of large, it's like large wood chips. Um, and that's really a matter of taste. It's a matter of what you know you like. Some people like the coarser texture of a pine bar. And keep in mind that if you use any organic matter for for mulch, right. so if if like for instance you've got a a, a pile of 
of mulch right here. And it's very, it's very chunky. Yep. And it's got, it looks like it's got a little bit of bark in it, a little bit, you know, lots of different. Yeah, mulch tends to be bark based or there are some with like cocoa hulls or things mm -hmm. like that that you can buy. It's regional. It seems yeah. to be regional. So it has to do with, with like if you're in Pennsylvania, you're going to get get byproducts from the chocolate industry. Oh, and, there you go. And it smells really yummy. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it depends on where you are. One key thing that I wanted to mention, just speaking of that, I have made this mistake. A lot of times people, especially they're moving into a new home, into their new digs, and they're taking some trees down, they have tree work done, and they say, leave the trees on the property and run them through the chipper, and then I can use that as mulch. And they just happily, you know, put that freshly chipped uh, tree on the garden. It is, you don't ever, ever, ever do that because it hasn't broken down yet. Right. I mean, if you you can put it someplace for a year to age. To age, exactly. But and don't use it as mulch. And then once it's sort of like aged for a year, then you can correct. Go ahead and spread it. Correct. I use it for for paths. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what it does, the problem is that the chemical process as it is aging um, is that it's pulling nitrogen out of the soil, and your plants need nitrogen. So your right. plants will start to look really anemic. I made the mistake of putting this on a burns turned disgusting yellow because I just mm. didn't know right. so you, yeah you definitely can use it and use it on paths you, because it's, use it on paths uh, um, yeah. use it you, you know in the you, second if, year if you've fine. got raised beds in your vegetable garden or anything and you want to have something in between yeah. you can use it for that yeah uh, yeah so and as far as sources for this I mean many nurseries like large-scale nurseries will have um, often they don't have compost in bulk but they usually have mulch in bulk um, and sometimes they'll be able to deliver it. There's, but, a, there's often a delivery fee. Yeah. Um, and also farms. If you live in an area where there are you know, dairy farms or something like that, they often will have an adjacent business um, that they give the manure to. Because compost um, made from farm animal manure, it's right. a great source. So typically in, in tandem. You know, so I, I think both of us at this stage... Um, try to do this in bulk. And, and again, if you're starting to plan new beds, this is the way to go. Because typically um, bags of, of either compost or mulch, depending on where you get them, between what, eight and $12, I would, a bag, for a, a bag like this. Um, compost and mulch usually go for what, between around here? Um, between four, I'd say around $40. $40 a, a yard. yard. So you get a lot more. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's and this, by it. the way, these piles, this is three yards. This, one, this is a little bit more, but I've been using it, and it's it's kind of settled because uh, I got it early in the season. Probably about three and a half, four yards. It might be. I think it's probably around four yards at the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully that cleared up, you know, a few things about about compost versus mulch. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, it's as you said, it's about function, and that compost is what – this is what's going to make your garden beautiful – as far as just the nutrients, um, right. this is what's feeding. This feeding, is feeding. what's going to improve your soil, yeah. and this is what's going to keep down weeds. Right, and and it does seem like a lot of, of work, a lot of stuff in the beginning of, of the season when you're putting down yeah. the mulch. But I guarantee you, the amount of, of time you spend putting down the mulch will be completely offset by by the amount of time that you would normally spend watering and weeding later on in the season. Exactly. So it's worth it to do that because your plants are going to be have more consistent right. uh, moisture in the soil and they're going to be healthier yeah. and happier and it's going to look prettier. Yeah. And just as your garden that really finished kind of professional look like you really are on top of it. Yeah. 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 So that's our, our two cents on the matter. And, um, so guys, thanks for joining us here on New Digs on this gorgeous day. And I think we're both going to try to get in the garden now. And I'm going to be weeding because um, I didn't get my mulch down. <laughs> so if, if you found this helpful, um, like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, and if you have any topics you want us to cover, comment below. Yeah. So, so thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time on New Digs. Bye.